Welcome back to Simple Recaps. Today's movie called Jung underscore E. Release year 2023. This movie takes place in the year 2135, in the future. When all of the planet's resources have been depleted, scientists have thus discovered a location where humans can dwell outside of Earth. However, some robots are present, who oppose having others settle here. Because of this, there is now a battle between humans and those robots. As a result, humans are already producing fighter robots to combat those robots, who were excellent fighters. But in this story, we shall learn what will happen next. As a result, in the beginning of the movie, we witness a large number of robots scattered everywhere. Looking at them, it appeared that a deadly brawl was taking place. These robots include Jung E, who was the story's primary character and who was unconscious. She sees some robots approaching her and coming to kill her as soon as her eyes open. She instantly picks up her revolver after standing up and begins battling them. One by one, she easily dispatches everyone. A large, menacing robot that resembled a dog has just arrived. Because the robot was a dog. Currently, Ying Yi receives a call from someone who says that it has a battery behind it that powers this robot. You can eliminate this robot and win the conflict by using this. She then picks up the struggle once more. Here, it is demonstrated that Ying Yi is located somewhere on the planet i.e., outside of her universe, as a result of her purpose in coming here. For a while, Ying Yi keeps battling that threatening dog robot. She was also firing at them non-stop, which ignited the robot. But that robot was incredibly strong and sophisticated. Because of this, it puts out the fire on it very quickly. The robot then advances on Ying Yi in an effort to murder her. She ran upstairs to hide because she was unable to flee. But in reality, she was planning to use this to lure the robot into a trap. Because the robot shoots as soon as it notices her. The gas tank is struck by the bullet's direct trajectory. As a result, there is a large explosion and flames. Many stones consequently fall on that robot. Now taking advantage of the opportunity, Yingyi shoots the robot with her rifle. She started to glance at a doll as she was about to fire. She stops paying attention as a result, and the robot shoots her. Wherein Yingyi's two fingers split and shatter. She was now observing her fingers as they abruptly stopped. And from this, we can deduce that Jung Yi is also not human, but a Jung Yi fighter robot, which was the subject of a lab test. Now, some researchers visit the lab and claim that Jung Yi consistently stops and comes here. As a result, she is no longer able to fight and loses the battle. I have no idea why this occurs. The team's manager has just arrived and stated that today, a few army officers will arrive. Therefore, halt today's work. Then they take Jung Yi, the robot, with them once more. She had accompanied them into the interview room, where each component of his body was divided, and just the top portion was preserved there. The lab director can be seen here as well, who was getting ready to address the army officers. He speaks frequently with the team's leader on how well my presentation went. And as you can see, I'll shock everyone, but he stops speaking in front of the police when they arrive. Yet he makes an effort to deliver a strong presentation. Specifically, he claims that in the year 2135, there are no longer any ways to sustain life on Earth. It is therefore impossible to reside here. Thus, in light of the conditions, the scientists had created a place for humanity to live outside of the planet in the sky. However, some robots did reside there. They attacked the uprising, for the reason that they did not want anyone to come here and deplete their resources. So that's why humans and robots started fighting. That conflict is deadly. And this conflict is known as the Adrian War. Now, this lab has begun creating fighter robots to combat those machines. Currently, it is also said that this conflict has not yet occurred, but has been ongoing for a long time. And the Korean fighter Jung Yi was excellent during this Adrian War. She had a lot of bravery. She had triumphed in numerous conflicts. But she sustained severe injuries in one battle, to the point where she fell into a coma. After that, the lab removed all the information from her memory, and built a fighting robot that resembled her, which we have already seen at the outset. The Jung Yi project was also the name of this project. The army officer now claims that, had Jung Yi successfully completed her most recent assignment, that is, prior to passing out. Subsequently, the Adrian War would have been over long ago. However, because the fighting continued, since then, it has continued in this manner. He adds that she can no longer combat the robot controlled by Jung Yi. As a result of her inability to pass her test, her test actually looked like this, that she put into practice. The entire setting is created to resemble a battlefield, but she was also unable to pass it. We now see the director, who was overjoyed following the presentation. He comments to his boss how impressive the presentation was. And if our fighter robots pass the test and the army officers approve of them, the army will then give the all clear. 
This implies that they will use these robots in the military and include them in the conflict. Then the leader informs him that the president gave his approval for the launch of this initiative. And they're coming to our lab today. The interview with the robot is followed by the leader leaving. That machine was acting just like Yung E, because she was made aware of Yung E's info. The robot is then damaged after the data has been removed. The leader now shares some incredibly unexpected facts with the man who is working with her. She claims that my mother was actually Yung E. Because of me, she used to travel to every conflict. Since I had lung cancer when I was a child. For my treatment, I required a large sum of money. My mother, Yung E, had to battle for me because of this. She then moves on to the next test after saying this. Additionally, it was necessary to distinguish between a human and a robot in this test. The leader was on the train when she was considering Yung E, her mother. The narrative then shifts to the past. When the leader's childhood home is depicted, when her procedure would take place, while her mother Yung E left for a mission, she cheerfully bids her daughter go. Additionally, if I return from the battle, my sweetheart, take care of yourself until I meet you. The plot is now back in the present. The hospital where the leader had gone. The doctor informs her that we had to operate on your lungs when you were a child. But in spite of that, your cancer is becoming worse. You're going to pass away, I'm sorry to say. Only two months remain. I shall therefore advise you to transfer your brain's info to another body. The doctor then gives him three alternatives on how to proceed. The first is that she shall be accorded all human and legal rights. Second, she will be granted complete privileges. However, there are some tasks she won't have to complete. And that includes getting married, traveling, etc. The third is also totally free. She can thereby provide her data to any business that offers this opportunity. However, she won't be seen as a human in this context. The use of her data will not be constrained in any way. These data can potentially be used by the government. Such a person will also receive payment in exchange. Now, as soon as the commander departs from there, we are aware that the doctor is a robot as well. The narrative then shifts back into the past, where these lab workers mention a deal to the leader's grandmother. They claim that you have signed this contract. The agreement stated that we would make use of Yung Brain E's data. Such a thing, such a formidable robot, will be created by us. Then it will engage in so much fighting in the Adrian War that he will succeed. The war will also come to an end. These people will also cover the cost of Yung schooling E's daughters in addition to this. The grandma of the leader agrees to this after hearing this. The narrative then resumes in the present day, where testing of Yung robot E's was taking place once more. Here, the director directs you to aim for Yung feet. E's. He truly wanted to take that information out of his brain. During the time that Yung Yi fought valiantly in the war, she was fighting with her strength. That area of his brain now activates during this exam.it was previously incapable of running. The director highlights it in yellow after observing this. The leader and director visit the lab's main office the following day. Considering that he met with the president today, he discovers out after arriving here that the president is not coming today. A police officer now approaches him in the interim. She also informs the director that the president will not be arriving today. And you present your report to me. I'll let the president know. They then depart for their lab. When they arrive, they learn that the president has already arrived. These two approach the president knowing this. Yes, the director abruptly comes to a stop. He appeared as though he had frozen. It leads us to believe that the director is a robot. These individuals then approach the president. He confirms that I have heard that the Adrian War is going to come to an end. Therefore, it is clear that we no longer need weapons or fighter robots to battle. You people fire this military project as soon as you can because of this. Then they announce that we will go make some home robots right away. Those who will cohabitate with others in their homes. And carry out their daily tasks. Because they will be helpful robots in the real world. Then they inform the leader that. I created a robot using data from my brain many years ago. Which is the director alone, not another. That is to say, the president created this director as a robot. The president then controls his director's robot before departing. By activation, I mean. These people are now starting over with their test. Where Ying Yi frequently stops and enters. The president is enraged by this. Because despite making numerous attempts, the Ying Yi robot failed to pass this test. After that, they bring Ying Yi the robot into the interview room. Where the director arrives and requests to amputate Ying Hand. Ease. He did so because he wanted to make sure that. Whether the yellow portion of his brain is active. Then he enters the building and fires numerous shots at his leg. And instructs you to turn on this Ying Yi robot once more. Indicating to begin. However, because the leader had complete control over this robot, she doesn't turn it on, which incenses the director greatly. He threatens the leader by putting his rifle to his head. He coerces him into turning it on. 
But now, in the interim, a police officer arrives here and informs that you have been summoned to the president's executive office. He departs from here because of that. The boss informs his team after he leaves that this project has to be stopped as soon as feasible. Then you people bring me all the information about it, when she eventually goes to obtain the info. She is astonished to learn that another Yin Yi robot has been created. And that is pretty filthy. The leader was so enraged after seeing this that she launches an assault on the robot's creator, killing him. Then he announces that the robot is now free. Consequently, anyone can buy it from us. Due to the fact that the business selected the third choice for it. It follows that anyone can receive it from them. Their leader exits it and continues on from there. And returns to the interview space. And tries to communicate with Yun Robot. Ease. Where the yellow portion of it is once more energized. Which was truly turned on when Yun Old Ease memory was connected to reality. Yes, at that point Junji Robot Ease begins to speak. Claims that my kid had surgery today. Then, I received a tiny doll as a gift from my daughter. As a reminder. However, she is missing and I am terribly concerned for her. The leader is so upset after hearing this that she begins crying. Considering that Yun Robot Ease was unaware of that. She is speaking to the daughter who is in front of her. The final day of her testing was the following day. The leader, however, wipes all of Yun Prior E's memories before testing. Additionally, the yellow portion greatly lessens it. Then the actual testing starts. Like it always does, it begins. Where, as usual, Yun Yi approaches and stops again. However, the filmmaker is a little unsure of this. He returns to view the recording again for that reason. He learns that Yun Yi was not shot in this passage. She continues to act as though she is going to pass away though. When the director notices this, he immediately sounds the emergency alarm. When she was killing everyone one by one, Yun Yi was doing fine. As a result of the alarm. Additionally, the cops were scheduled to arrive for five minutes. However, Yun Yi arrives to a hall first. She is also taken aback by how many other robots like mine there are in this place. She was now observing these robots. At that point, some further fighter robots arrive. Which strikes Yun Yi without delay. Yun Yi strikes them instead of remaining silent. This is where their potentially dangerous fight begins. The police had now also arrived. Which was exclusively a robot. Fighting those robots is Yun Yi. She is valiantly battling them. However, a robot catches her in the interim. And was on the verge of killing her. The leader then emerges from behind. And she sets that robot ablaze. The robot cops then prepare to arrive. After that, they view through the webcam. That robot's data has been erased by the leader. And inserted into a different robot. Then she is transporting that other robot somewhere else. After that, whenever individuals leave the area by rail. The director arrived at that point. This hits the director in the head. She sustained severe injuries as a result. Jang Robot Ease was furious after seeing this. That it begins to struggle with the filmmaker. And fires at him. The director's eye is struck by the bullet as it travels straight. And now that the director has arrived, he discovers that I, too, am a robot. He was now, however, more dangerous and joyful. Here, he bursts into loud laughter. Then moves on to assault Yung Robot. Ease. And right now, the two of them are engaged in a hazardous argument. The robot police also arrives here in the interim. Where Yingyi battles beside them by himself. And kills them in battle. A section of the train breaks down during this conflict. Where the train splits off. Where Yingyi and the director begin to drop. However, the leader raises Yingyi barely in time. The director then collapses. Then the leader informs Yingyi that. The remainder of the populace can arrive at any time. Who will capture you once more. You must go on from here because of this. You can now live your life as you like, in complete freedom. Following that, the mother and daughter give each other one final hug. And bid each other farewell. Ying Yi then flees the area. She had total freedom. Repeatedly from that lab, testing, and agreement. She was overjoyed to lead such a liberated and tranquil life. This is how the film finishes.